Good evening. You're joining the State of Business on our television. My name is Kavishka Pereira. First, let's take a look at today's headlines. Colombo Air Symposium commences under President's patronage. President pledges to streamline development in the North and East. News in detail. The Colombo Air Symposium was inaugurated under the patronage of President Maitri Palasirisena in Colombo today. This year, the forum was held under the theme Air Strategy in substantiating the geostrategic importance of Sri Lanka. The main aim of the forum is to provide an even ground for the stakeholders to blueprint pragmatic air power solutions for the issues emerging at global, regional and national levels. During the two-day session of the forum, foreign and local military experts, diplomats, intellectuals and air power experts will share their knowledge and experiences. This year, the forum has a wide international participation of 25 countries and 12 research papers comprising of six international representations from Australia, Bangladesh, India, Japan, Nepal and the USA will be presented as well. President Maitripala Sirisena said that the government would extend every possible assistance to streamline developmental activities in the North and East to provide maximum benefits to the people. He made these remarks during a discussion with the representatives of the Tamil National Alliance yesterday in the parliament. The issues pertaining to development activities of the country and the need for streamlining them and adverse effects of inclement weather were also discussed during the meeting. The delegation included opposition leader R. Sampandan and member of parliament M. A. Sumantiran. The president also held a meeting with the representatives of the Tamil Progressive Front where the issues pertaining to upcountry Tamils such as their wages and development activities were discussed. Tamil Progressive Front leader Mano Ganeshan, Minister Palani Digambaran and V. Radhakrishnan attended this meeting. Prime Minister Ranil Vikramasinghe left for India today on a three-day official visit. The Sri Lankan Premier is expected to hold bilateral discussions on a wide range of topics with his Indian counterpart Narendra Modi during his stay. The two Prime Ministers are likely to review the status of the India-assisted housing projects in Jaffna. During the visit, Prime Minister Vikramasinghe is also expected to meet the Home Minister Rajnath Singh and the External Affairs Minister Sushma Swaraj. Let's take a short break. Stay tuned for more news after this. Welcome back. The inauguration ceremony of Sri Lanka Retail Forum 2018, organized by the Sri Lanka Retailers Association, took place in Colombo last evening under the patronage of Prime Minister Ranil Vikramasinghe. The forum was concluded in Colombo today. This year, the forum was held under the theme Towards a Dynamic and Evolving Retail Sector. Featuring global and local experts, the objective of the forum was to provide cutting edge insights on global retail trends to Sri Lankan retailers, learn from best practices of industry leaders, and get inspired to adapt and adopt locally and identify key turning points that Sri Lankan retailers must latch on to and key pain points that need to be tackled. This year, the forum focused on four thematic sessions, reshaping customer engagement, driving tomorrow's retail today, new models challenging the status quo, brands, culture, sustainability, and where retail in the region is heading. E-platforms for retail and how the industry can evolve into the digital ecosystem were also discussed during the forum. Speaking at the opening ceremony of the forum, the founder chairman of the Sri Lanka Retailers Association, Hussein Sadiq, emphasized upon the major initiatives implemented by the association in order to develop and further nourish the retail industry in Sri Lanka. Sri Lanka has the edge to create the regional Singapore. With the millions of square feet of retail coming in in this country, with the regional economic growth, I think it's the right time that we have come together. So what we do is, we as an uh, association, we have taken certain key steps and we have set up Sri Lanka Retail Academy to build the capacity and see how the professionals and we create an industry whom we are proud of. From a similar, the traditional retailers, a modern organized retailers. And if you really see India, there is more than one third of the country is rural or not connectable. So I think we as a country, a matured middle class, and we are much better positioned. So we want to create that experience. We want to be the voice of retail and we want to create new employment so that even the country, uh, there is so much of synergies, the they can be part of the global retail. 
Meanwhile, addressing the forum, Prime Minister Ranil Vikramasinghe made the following remarks. At the moment, globally, the retail industry is facing problems because of the global economic crisis. Except in USA, you would find in all other parts of the world, it's biting. In China, for instance, you can see how the cost of living is affecting uh, sales and the fact that the local authorities have taken too much of debt on. You are finding in India how it has affected sales, affected the people. So most parts of the world at the moment, maybe for a year or so, will go through this phase. So even in Sri Lanka, you have, as you say, uh, the limitations of money circulation, the interest rates, the non-performing loans going up, the fact that people are finding it a bit more difficult with the total global economic currency crisis means that retails are going through a difficult time. But within that, there's a shakeout that's taking place, whether it's in Sri Lanka or others. So firstly, as you have said, we, we need, we have asked for a national policy on retail. So yes, let's sit down and see how we can help everyone from the village uh, retailer upwards but as you realize how, how the patterns are changing, so how do we help them? There are many ways you need help. First, you have to have credit. Secondly, you must ensure there's money in the hands of the people. And this is the challenge that all governments in the world are faced with. Addressing the inaugural session of the Retail Forum 2018 today, Minister of Finance and Mass Media, Mangal Samaravira, stated that despite the external and internal shocks, the country is facing the government has been able to make progress to stabilize the economy. Minister Samaravira also assured that additional efforts are underway to put the country on a stronger growth footing. While the opportunities are growing rapidly, the last couple of years have been challenging for retail as the economy was subject to exogenous shocks. Successive years of drought that persisted through 2016 and 17 had uh, debilitating effects on the agricultural sector, directly affecting the incomes of 30% of our labor force. A rise in global fuel prices has further exacerbated disposable expenditure locally and across the globe. In spite of these challenges, the government has made I believe significant progress in stabilizing the economy. The fiscal sector has long been the source of instability in the Sri Lankan economy. In fact, in 2017, by the end of last year, the government achieved a primary surplus for the first time since the 1950s, over 60 years ago, and this trend has continued in the first half of 2018. I and we hope to increase this surplus at the end of this year. Meanwhile, speaking on the country's debt burden, Minister Samaravira noted that the government has to repay a debt of 1.9 trillion rupees this year, which records the highest debt repayment since independence. The minister also noted that 4 trillion rupees should be paid for loans within the next two years. The monetary sector also has been stabilised with credit growth brought within target range and reserves improved significantly in spite of some debt repayments this year. As I've mentioned before, Sri Lanka is paying the largest ever debt repayment of nearly 1.9 trillion rupees uh, this year. And the next two years also uh, going to see some significant repayments uh, with the bunching of our debt nearly 4 trillion rupees is to be paid in 2019 and 2020. Despite all this, the results of stabilization are being seen as inflation, for example, has fallen from 2.5, fallen to 2.5 in September this year, compared to the 8.6 inflation we had last year in September. The government's economic policy has been to reorient Sri Lanka uh, towards a greater external focus, taking on international competition to, dri to drive competitiveness in our own economy. Again, the results are now materializing. In 2017, Sri Lanka achieved a record US dollars 1.9 billion in FDI. In the first seven months alone of this year, FDI reached US dollars 1.35 billion, 
a 138% increase uh, year on year. Exports reached a record US dollar 11.3 billion last year and have grown a further 6.1 in the first seven months of 2017. There is also a positive outlook for exports and FDI in the economy, as there are several new projects in the pipeline to the tune of billions of dollars. Let's take a short break. Stay tuned for stock updates after this. Welcome back. Trading at the Colombo Stock Exchange ended on a positive note today. The All Share Price Index gained 1.62 points to close at 5,778.37, and the S&P SL20 gained 15.11 points to close at 2,932.56. The turnover was 151.8 million rupees, and 4.9 million shares were traded. Next up is forex rates. That's all the news we have for today. Join us tomorrow at the same time for more of the very latest. Thank you and good night.